Imagine a simply supported steel beam like a sturdy bridge. It rests on supports at both ends, allowing it to handle weight without collapsing. When a load is applied, the beam experiences forces like shear and bending. Drawing a shear force and bending moment diagram helps visualize these internal forces. In simpler terms, it is like understanding how the beam responds to different pressures. I will use Abacus to simulate and verify these responses against theoretical calculations, providing a practical insight into structural analysis. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. Do you know how to plot shear force and bending moment diagram using Abacus? In this lecture, I will explain how we can draw shear force and bending moment diagram in Abacus and how does it compare with theoretical calculations. This is the problem which I'm going to use. A 5 meter secondary beam with 30 kN per meter UDL. First of all, I will draw its shear force and bending moment diagram using analytical calculations and then I will use Abacus to analyze the beam. Let's draw shear force diagram. Shear force is WL over 2, which comes out to be 75 kN. This is the shear force diagram. Let's now draw bending moment diagram. The maximum bending moment when a beam is a simply supported beam is WL square over 8. And the moment comes out to be 93.75 kN meter. This is the bending moment diagram. Material is steel, Young's modulus is 210000 Newton per millimeter square, Poisson's ratio is 0 0.3, section used is 305165 into 46 UKB, second moment of area for this section is 9900 centimeter power 4. I have obtained these properties from section table and the one which I have used here is steel for life section table. Type in steel for life. You'll be able to see a blue book. Simply go to Universal Beams, scroll down. You can have a look at beam 3056546. I've got its B, H, T, W, and, and second moment of area from this table. In beams, there are three critical design checks moment, shear force, and deflection. For secondary beam, the main design check is deflection. If it passes deflection, then almost certainly it will pass all other design checks. So let us first of all work out deflection. The deflection for this beam would be 5WL power 4 over 384EI. This is Young's modulus, this is I, this is length and this is the load. It comes out to be 11.7 millimeter. The deflection limit for simply supported beams is span over 360. Span is 5 meters and in millimeters it is 5000 divided by 360. The limit is 13.9. Deflection of the beam is less than 13.9. It means the beam is fine in deflection. This is the cross section of the beam. Height is 306.6 millimeter. Width is 165.7 millimeter. Thickness of flange 11.8. Thickness of web is 6.7. The root radius is 8.9. Note that in Abacus, you cannot model this circular portion root radius. Results for deflections are going to be slightly different than what you get in analytical solution. Let us model this problem in Abacus now. For modeling the problem, I will be using these nine steps and I've taken them exactly from modules. So these are nine modules which I will use to solve this problem. And it, this is quite intuitive. So they appear as it is in modules. First step is part where we will create geometry. First, double click on part, beam, 3D deformable, via planar and approximate size is 5000. Click on line. Click here and click here and then I want to dimension this line as 5000 millimeters. So click here and click here. 5000. Click done. A part has been created. Second step is property module where we will define materials and assign cross sections. Double click on material, steel, mechanical, elastic, elastic material, Young's modulus is 210000, poison's ratio is 0 0.3. Click OK. Material has been defined. Let's define section now. Click on section, beam section, beam, click, 
the poison's ratio is 0 0.3 here i want to create a profile i section or i will say i beam click on i click ok where this i is location of local axis i will say that it should be half of the depth of the section depth of the section is 306.6 .6. half will be 153.3 306.6 b1 and b2 they are width of the section 165.7 t1 and t2 they refer to thickness of flange thickness of flange is 11.8 t3 is thickness of web thickness of web is 6.7 click ok section has been defined now i have to assign this section to the beam click on part beam and then section assignment click ok assign this beam section once i have to assign this beam section i have to tell abacus that where is the longitudinal axis of the beam and where i have the cross section so for this click on assign beam section orientation click on this beam click done and click ok if i want to see in three-dimensional space now tangent has been defined along the longitudinal axis of the beam axis one and two they refer to the cross section these are local axis where i will be finding my shear force and bending moment so shear force will be found along local axis two or y in global axis and moment is about local axis one or global axis z remember these things they will be very useful when i will define field variables click ok to confirm third step is assembly module where we will assemble all parts then go to assembly here i will assemble the parts click on assembly click on instances assemble this part fourth step is step module where we define all analysis steps and parameters next thing is a step click on steps load static general step click ok incrementation is 0 0.1 and 5 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 here i want to activate two important field variables if i want to plot shear force and bending moment click on field output and double click on load in forces and reactions i want to activate this section forces and moments which is normally used in beams but i will activate this end fork as well nodal forces due to element stresses this is normally used in solid structures but i will tell you in a while that why am i using n fork as well to draw shear force and bending moment diagram we have to activate these two outputs which are section forces and moments sf and n fork nodal forces due to element stresses the first one is more common for beam elements the second one is used for solid element but there is a limitation for sf for finding section forces and moments the variable sf uses the local coordinate system and variable n fork uses the global coordinate system if i want to find out shear force then i will be using this i will need sf2 and if i want to find out moment that would be along z direction so it will be sm1 equally if i wanted to find out n fork so n fork would be n fork 2 which is along this global y direction moment is going to be n fork 6 because it is along the z direction so this is what i'm aiming to find out at the end of this tutorial sf1 is axial force and sf2 is transverse shear force which i'm looking for in this tutorial i will find out sm1 as well note that this is not available for cubic formulations if you are using cubic elements then you have to use n fork linear elements have got two nodes at the end cubic elements have got one extra node in the middle this is the description of nodal forces which can be applied to beams and solid elements equally and here i will be looking for n fork 2 which is shear force and i will be looking for moment in z direction fifth is interaction module where we define contact interactions and constraints I don't have any contact interaction so i will skip that step sixth is load module where we define boundary conditions and loading i will go to next step which is load in load i will define first of all boundary conditions go to 
BC. Here I want to define boundary conditions. A pin boundary condition on left, displace pin rotation. Click OK. Click on this point. Pin boundary condition has translations restricted in all directions. Click OK. Next boundary condition is roller. Click on displacement rotation. Click on this point. OK. A roller can move in horizontal direction, but it cannot translate in vertical direction. So I will restrict these two u2 and u3 translations click ok roller has been defined next i will define load i will say simply say udl in step load and here i will define a line load click ok click on the line in component 2 i want to define minus 30 which will apply minus 30 kN per meter downward load click ok load has been defined seventh is mesh module where we define mesh size and element type okay. The next step is mesh. I want to define mesh at part level. So click on mesh, element type, click on the section and beam element B31, click OK. And then seed part. I will define a size of 100 and then I will carry out a mesh sensitivity analysis starting from 250, 150, 10, 5, and as fine as 1. And we will see how it goes click OK and then click on mesh mesh part click all right mesh has been defined eight is job module which we use to run and monitor analysis click on job here I will define a job double click on job and say 3d beam in 3d space click OK and click all right submit the beam and monitor it and finally ninth is visualization module used for viewing results Next step is visualization. One misses stresses. I'm interested in first of all U2, that is deflection. Deflection is 12.37. And then I want to have a look at shear force in two direction. The maximum shear force is 73.5. And from analytical solution, it is 75. So it is less than that. That's the reason that I will carry out a parametric study of mesh to see that how it affects the results. And I want to see the moment. Moment I'm looking for is SM1. The maximum moment is 93.68. These are section forces in beam. They are very similar to N fork. If I'm looking for shear force, I will look for N fork 2, which is 73.5. And if I'm looking for moment, that will be N fork 6 because moment is always in global axis direction. So here moment is 93.75. Moment from analytical solution is 93.75. So very close match for moment. Now I want to plot these shear force and bending moment diagram. So click on path, click on edge list, continue after I want to choose this. I want to have shortest distance. So starting from here and ending here. Click OK. Path has been defined. Next I will go to XY data and path. Now first make sure that step is at last step first i want to plot the moment diagram sm1 save as moment uh, next i want to plot the shear force diagram so go to sf sf2 plot and then i want to plot the deflection as well plot save deflection now i want to create the same model but in two dimensional space so for this i will first of all copy this model copy model i will say 2d beam and i will delete this part and i will create part again go to part beam 2d 2d planar deformable wire and 5000 click on line again and create a line click on dimension and create a dimension of 5000 in that way beam is defined now i have to assign a section to this beam so go to section assignment click on this assign beam section beam section has been assigned then i have to assign the beam section orientation as well click here and assign the tangent okay go to assembly instances beam 2d okay and steps steps are fine the field output variables make sure that you activate sf section moments and n fork then i will go to load module where i will define these boundary conditions so pin double click on pin click ok i will click 
the point again click here and a pin has been defined then i will click on roller click here you can see that now you just have x and y coordinates and then you have rotation in z direction previously it was x y and z so click ok i want to choose this point click ok boundary conditions have been defined loading i will apply the loading again click on load and i will change the loading here click here component 2 is minus 30 then i will go to mesh click on element type here i want to use 2d linear element part seed i want to seed the part with 100 elements done then i will mesh the part after meshing i will go to job and i will define another job that will be 2d beam and then i will submit the job if you have a look at results view let me activate the section odb outputs here i want to render the profile by 1.5 and i want to have a look at the 3d view i'm interested in u the u2 is 12.37 same as 3d formulation sf2 is 73.5 same as 3d formulation sm1 is 93.7 same as a 3d formulation here i can change the element to cubic elements to see if there is any difference so go to mesh again and here go to element type and change the element type to cubic formulation we will see what happens and then i will submit the analysis and here i want to see u2 first of all u2 here you can see there is a difference in u2 previously it was 12.37 now it is 11.92 it is very close to our analytical value which is 11.7 so by using the cubic formulation i'm able to get a closer value for deflection have a look at shear force now here you can see that for cubic formulation there is no sf2 so sf2 is not available for cubic formulation so that's the reason i activated this n fork so if i have a look at n fork 2 i can see that shear force is 93.5 so shear force sf2 is not available for cubic elements so that's the reason we need this n fork variable as well again moment is 93.75 and fork 6 or i can say sm1 is the same thing 93.77 if i have a look at the stress now this beam passes the deflection check will it also pass the moment check and is moment check necessary how we can use these results s1 misses to confirm that moment is fine as well but i will leave you with this question put the comments down below here are results for 3d plane linear formulation i have carried out mass sensitivity analysis here you have shear force in kilo newton theoretical which is 75 and shear force obtained from finite element analysis and percentage error is worked out and then similarly you have moment and deflection for linear elements you can see that moment really matches very well and deflection theoretical is 11.7 and from fe we get 12.4 in case of shear force the percentage error is 5 initially when we use 250 by 250 then we use a very small mesh size one by one then you can see that the answer matches with the theoretical answer let us see what happens when we use cubic formulation in cubic formulation the shear force is exactly the same as we got it from linear formulation moment is exactly same as well as we got it from linear formulation the deflection is different it is very close to what we get from theoretical formula so it is 11.9 and mesh size doesn't really affect the deflection the only thing which is affected by mesh size is shear force as you would expect that in 2d formulation the results are not different from 3d formulation it's just another way to model beam as line elements and again 2d plane cubic formulation isn't much different from 3d plane cubic formulation the only thing changing here is the plane earlier we were using 3d plane to model a beam using line elements and now we're using 2d plane to model line elements all lecture slides and modeling files are included in this web link 